Hi everybody, I'm Cassandra from Craft to Believe After and welcome to another video. Now you guys, you had better grab yourselves a cup of coffee or tea or a project because I have a feeling, as I guess recently with most of my videos, this is going to be a rather long and chatty video because I have just got a load of things to share with you this week. And I think I'm going to jump straight into two projects that has given me an immense amount of joy this week. The first thing is my bear or my first project <laughs> uh, and there's actually two projects that I'll speak about but the one you are familiar with has been my redesign remake what I call it of this bear. It's called Nancy and Bernard or Bernard the Bears. So for those of you who've been following me for the last couple of weeks you will know my struggles that I had with this bear. I actually did it, it must be a few months ago. I was really unhappy with the shaping of the face of this bear when I did it straight from the pattern, made some adjustments, remade the bear recently and he is now all done. So in a previous video I explained how I added just two row rows to the face to give the muzzle a little shaping. Now as you can see he was finished in my previous video but I didn't attach any of the parts because I wanted to do a little tutorial which I posted yesterday. So the tutorial was for how I attach ears uh, to a head. Now even though this head is worked from front to back, most of my patterns actually uh, are worked from the top to the bottom or from the bottom and you end at the top of the head. So it might be you know how you pin your ears will be a little different but basically my technique for sewing them on is exactly the same. And then the second little tutorial I had was how I attach a closed head to an open body. So I hope you guys are enjoying those tutorials. I found again yesterday when I uh, filmed the tutorials it's much more difficult to do a tutorial than to just come and sit here and randomly chat to you all. So if I chat to you I think it's easy for me to explain what I do. So I do this and this and this but when you actually sit down and film a tutorial and try and explain really properly while showing what you do, I found it's a little more tricky and I think this is probably why I don't do a lot of tutorials. It's actually a completely different way of filming and talking and it was very difficult for me. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope the, the gist of my uh, techniques came across and it, you will find it helpful when you attach parts to Omegurumi. So this cutie all done, all stitched up. I did attach, uh, I think the only part that I had missing was the little straps on his overalls, attached some cute little buttons so he is all done. Um, I mentioned before that I used for his overalls this yarn, Zafira from Hobby which is a discontinued yarn but what I wanted to mention is there is another yarn that Hobby sells that is almost exactly the same. I've used it before and it is the Porto Bello and they have a fairly similar blue. Now I didn't, I don't have a blue to show you but on their website if you go to all the colors of the Porto Bello they do have a very similar color. So if you look at them they both have sort of the same type of structure. They are actually both listed as a four weight um, they are listed as a full weight but this one seems a tiny bit more fluffy. Um, I don't know how to explain it but I used a three millimeter hook um, when I use this as well as with a portobello and they work up the same. I really like the texture. There is a tiny bit of wool in it so it has, not that you can really see it on camera but it's got a very nice sort of a halo uh, to the item. So I really liked how this one turned out. Now <laughs> my next project and what happened was I had showed you 
the bare head that caused me all the drama before that I was so unhappy with, the whole reason I remade the bear. And when I filmed, you know, when I ended my video last week, I packed everything away, I took that bare head that I'd shown in my previous video, went downstairs and I actually chucked it in the bin. I was done with that bare head. That thing was not gonna stare at me all judgy anymore. <laughs> done with him so he went into the bin I sat down had a cup, a cup of coffee and I was starting to scroll through some of the comments that were starting to come in from the video and one of the very first comments was from a lovely subscriber uh, Nancy she comments on all of the videos she always takes part in all the collabs and she wrote a life changing comment all it said was, have you thought about cutting off the safety nose and attaching a shaped muzzle? And I'm telling you guys, it was like a bomb exploded in my head. I'd never, never considered it. I actually jumped up. My husband was busy in the kitchen making dinner. And I was like, please don't put anything in the dustbin. So I went back to the dustbin. Uh, luckily, the bare head was on top. Nothing was piled on top of it yet. I plucked out the bare head in the two separate ears because I hadn't attached them and I started crocheting a separate muzzle to attach to the face and I cannot tell you why I never considered this uh, because every single bear I have ever designed has got basically a flat face with a separate muzzle you attach to it. That never even crossed my mind to do for this bear and when Nancy wrote this I actually wrote back and, and said thank you you literally saved this bear from the bin and he might actually be completed it turned out to be a she that got completed and I will show you this bear now but that one comment so believe me when I say when you give me comments and suggestions I just I love it it is like this one, as I say, life-changing. I couldn't believe it had never even crossed my mind. And I, this is why I like the interaction of comments because it is so inspiring. You give me ideas for things that I had just not thought about. So let me show you the bee that literally got rescued from the trash based on a single comment. And this is the bee. So as you can see, all I did, a brilliant suggestion, I made a separate muzzle and I attached it to that annoying flat face that caused me to chuck this head in the bin. Added the muzzle, attached the ears. Once I had done that to the little face, because I already had the safety eyes in, I wasn't going to remove the safety eyes left it as soon as I attached the muzzle, the ears, and I did a little bit of embroidering. Like this bear was meant to have a life. <laughs> and I started straight away completing the rest of the pattern. So in this case, and it was so interesting when I went back, and I never really noticed it before, that the name of this bear is Nancy. So I thought, well, if this is not a sign, I do not know. This bear has got to be a girl. So one of the dresses in the book, it's actually for, I think, the cat or one of the other, uh, one of the other toys, but there's like a whole wardrobe that you can choose from. So I decided on this cute little dress. I really liked the shaping. Uh, you know, you do a, a panel with back loops. Um, I did had to because I worked on with a slightly thicker yarn than they than the pattern is designed for in the book So again, I had to do some take some artistic liberty, but I Finished this cute little dress um, In the pattern or in the book the pattern actually has some straps just like with the The overalls it was supposed to have these straps in the back, but I just made two little chains a single crochet back into it and I made a little bow. So this is my Nancy B that got rescued. I can't believe it. This head that has given me headaches for months has now turned into this 
adorable bay that finally got completed. Like I say, thanks to a brilliant comment by one of you lovely folks. So please keep on giving me these fantastic suggestions. I love hearing it. I love the interaction. This is, and I think, you know, um, Marsha over at Mimi Makes Keepsakes, she says it perfectly when she says, y'all are my crochet besties. And this is how I feel like this is this crochet group I get together with every week and we have an exchange of ideas. And this, like I guess I last week resulted in the saving of this poor bear from the bin. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing now two bears from this specific book. Both of them with adjusted faces, so <laughs> neither one of them 100% as they are in the book. But just in case you wanted to know, it's from the, the majority of the pattern were from this book. Cute Crocheted Animals by Emma Varnum. This book is in UK terms, so just be aware if you want to buy this book. I think Emma Varnum has got a few books out. They are in UK terminology. Now just to show, I did actually make a little poncho. The bear in the book does have a little poncho on and I really enjoyed making it. But once I put it on, it just didn't fit quite right. So even, you know, it's a little, it's a little, if I have the, the front part completely centered, the back part is terribly skewed. And no matter what I do, I cannot get it to go straight. So I thought, no, I like this dress enough to just have my little bear just wearing a little summery dress, just like this. So there we have it. These are my first two projects that I'm going to share with you for this week. The highlight, they were the absolute highlight of my week. All right, you guys, next thing. As you know, I love crochet alongs, I like make-alongs, I like challenges and collabs. This is what my life is revolving around these days. And the next one that I've really been enjoying is the hashtag a year of Granny Squares Cal, hosted by the lovely Jenny over at In My Spare Time Crochet. I will link her channel down below. We are currently on square number three. I think we're heading into square number four this coming week. But let me just show you the squares I've got so far. So this one was the square for week one. And we're using the book A Year of Granny Squares. So I'll link the book as well down in my description box. So this was week one. Then we had week two that I really, really enjoyed making. I loved how this one turned out. A beautiful square. And then the third week, or the one that we finished most recently, is this one. Now I don't have the physical book, I have it on my Kindle, so I don't actually know the name of this one, but this was such a nice way to do as well. I really like how it turned out. I still think number two is my favorite. I really, really love the 3D effect on this square. So week number two is still my favorite, but this was the last square or the square that we have done most recently. So if you want to see what the A Year of Granny Squares Cal is all about, please head over to Jenny's channel. She has a very entertaining YouTube channel. I love watching her videos. She does a bit of everything. Uh, she happens to also be a part of the um, Omigurumi World Tour that I'm hosting. She's also getting the book a bit later on when it heads over to Australia. Our book is heading to the UK and I think maybe I should jump over from my Granny Squeeze Girl to our Omigurumi World Tour 2024 which we are working from this book. Now, for those of you, and I've had a lot of new subscribers, so welcome to everyone that have recently joined. If you are not familiar with the Omigurumi World Tour, I have sent two of these books, physical books, out into the world. One book is crossing all over the United States. The second book started here in Europe. Um, we're jumping now from sort of the mainland Europe, continental Europe, I don't know what we call it, over to the UK. 
So our last participant was from Denmark. She has shipped it off to the UK. So we're waiting within the next week, hopefully, depending on how quick the post is, the first person in the UK will receive it. From the UK, it's heading to Canada. From Canada, it's heading to New Zealand, then to Australia, and then back to me in Denmark. So, I mean, it's picking up pace. I love it. The US book, because it is within the US, even though the US is bigger than Europe, it's traveling fairly quickly there now. So we just had our very, very most recent choice from the book was The Little Pig, which I did make. Now I'm two projects behind at this point. I still need to do the succulent planter and the tomato. Um, I wonder if the, no, the tomato was before the pig, I think. But I did end up making The Little Pig from the book. So I think this may have been our last project choice from the book. So if you're not receiving the book, so if you're not one of the people who are receiving the physical book that's being posted, many, many, many people have got this book in their crochet book collections because it's, it's a couple of years old at this point. So I know a lot of people have this book. If you want to join in with the Omegurumi World Tour, because we cannot, there's no more spots to post it to anyone. The spots have been completely filled up actually within the first three days of me announcing the Omegurumi World Tour within three days, both books were completely filled up, uh, which was fantastic. But there are so many, so many people joining in who's not receiving the book, but who's following along with the book. So as the projects are selected, anyone who has the book can join in, make that project, email me a photo, and I put it into our journal. Uh, which is a PDF document on my blog. Again, I will link the link. I will leave the link to my blog or that blog post where you can see the PDF document. I will link it in the description box. I update that journal probably every two to three days. So every couple of days, you can head back there and look at all the new photos that I've added. Now I thought it would be fun to give you a little stats update on the projects that we've received. So, so far, for the Omegurumi World Tour in total, between the two books, we have made 14, or 14 different projects have been chosen. They are going to be eventually duplicates of every project. So, so far, the duplicates have been with the bunny and the jellyfish. So, both books have now had that choice. But eventually, I mean, the books are obviously the same. <laughs> so eventually we will have the same choice for both books. It's just being chosen at different times. So today, which is about two months into the world tour, 14 projects have been selected. Um, I will give you the numbers of photos I have received for each project, as well as our total number of photos that's in the journal up to me filming this video, which is the 18th of August, 2024. So our whale, we have got 35 photos. The jellyfish, 31. The macarons, 23. The cookies, 22. The pie, 14. The duck, 18. The sunflower, 9. Although, in addition to that, we did receive three more daisies. The turtle, 17. The cupcake, 13. The bunny, 20. The donut, 14. The succulent planter, 9. The tomato, 8. And the pig, 4. So definitely the pig was our last most recent choice. Um, and these project pages remain open. So if you still want to submit a whale, which was the very, very first project, you are more and welcome to. So don't think because a page is filled up in the journal that you cannot send me any more photos. I will add another page. There's never going to be a limit to the amount of photos that you can send in for the Hello From pages. Now a staggering, you guys, and we're not even halfway yet, a staggering 240 photos in total have been added to our journal so far which is just fantastic. I went through the journal yesterday and I got so emotional. It was 
and my husband can't understand why I get emotional every time I view that journal and every time photos come in. But to think that we are this crochet community, we sit in dozens of different countries and we are all getting together and working at the same time on the same project. And I just find it mind blowing. It is just, sometimes I cannot even like think about the fact that there's so many people with the same love of crochet all around the world. I absolutely love it. So please, if you want to still join in, I'm keeping this journal open. So please, if you want to do any of the earlier projects, I mean, as I said, we're not even halfway yet. So more than enough time. These projects take, for the most part, very, very quickly to make. So please, if you've got the book, if you want to borrow it from your library, I know a lot of people who do not have the book have been able to borrow it from their local libraries. Please, you're more than welcome to send me in your photo and I will add it to our Hello From pages in the journal. It's absolutely fantastic. All right. I think that was that. Is that all? I thought I had so much more <laughs> to tell you guys. Actually, I probably do. And as soon as the video is going to be over, I'm going to think, oh, I should have told you this and this and this. But um, maybe it's good that I have something more to talk to you about uh, next week. Actually, maybe I can add quickly two more things. I was watching Jeanette over at Crafty Clegg's Creations yesterday. And she saw my video where I spoke about this Miffy bunny and the whole, you know, my whole thing about it where I bought a bunny from that I got from the museum shop in Paris. The little dress was inspired by an artwork. And I sort of mentioned that perhaps we should do at some point a little challenge or collab where we work on like the Miffy bunny and we make a little outfit or a dress based on an artwork that we love. Um, so we, we, for instance, the bunny I've got has got like a blue dress with little yellow stars and it was based on the Starry Night painting by Van Gogh. So this one, I started with a yellow dress and actually one of you also made a comment and said, oh, was I thinking about the sunflower painting from Van Gogh when I chose the color for the dress? Yes. It was absolutely, I had it in my mind that I wanted to base it on Van Gogh's sunflower painting, but then I just never got around to it. So I think I might still complete and do a little embroidered sunflowers on this one because I want to finish this idea that I had started with. And this is why I chose the yellow. But then I watched um, Jeanette's video yesterday and she had made a Miffy bunny and she also really liked the idea of doing the dress or the outfit inspired by artwork. Many of you actually in the comments last week said, yes, please, it's a great idea. You'd love to do it. It would be so much fun to do something inspired by art. And I sort of thought, okay, I'll do it in the future. But once I saw Jeanette's video yesterday, I'm like, okay, maybe even though like all of us are part of a million cows at the moment, maybe like a relaxing non cal <laughs> I don't, I don't even know what to call it. I'm going to call it a non-cal make-along. No, it's not a make-along, a non-cal. Anyone who wants to, I have got, I will link this Miffy Bunny pattern that I bought from Etsy. Now I did find a free Miffy Bunny pattern on Ravelry. I think it goes to the Lovely Crafts or something like that, a website. So there is a free pattern that I will also link down below. So for anyone who feel like they just have got a bit of time on their hands, you don't know what to do with yourself, in between the seven or nine or twelve cows that we are currently busy with, you just, you know, it happens that sometimes we just for half an hour do not know how to keep ourselves busy. When you find yourself in that situation, you don't know what to do. Maybe grab one of these Miffy Bunny patterns, scroll through like your favorite art pieces on the web. Maybe you've got a very nice piece of art in your home. I mean, most of us have got either photographs, paintings, you've been to museums, you've seen sculptures, 
whatever the artwork is that have inspired you at any point in your life. Let's do this little non-cal. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to maybe keep it open for a couple of weeks, let's say the end of September. So anyone who feels like they want to make an art-inspired outfit for this Miffy Bunny. Now, the Miffy Bunny, and someone also mentioned it in the comments, it's based on a children's storybook series by a Dutch author. Now, part of the series, I think there was a different bunny, like a brown bunny as well, and a little bear. Now, I want to see if I can get that little bear pattern. I'll, I'll pop a picture on the screen of the brown bunny, the white bunny, and the little bear. It's actually a crochet. It's going to be a crocheted, uh, a photo of three crocheted items from the same Miffy story series. So I want to see if I can get maybe that bear pattern, or even if I have to wing it. It doesn't look terribly complicated. But let's see if we can use the Miffy pattern or the Miffy characters and make an outfit or an accessory it doesn't even have to be a full outfit so if you want to do a plain bunny with an accessory that's a little sunflower or a little I don't know whatever the artwork possibly could be um, let's see if we can get a few bunnies together and I will do a little slideshow sort of towards the end of uh, September like I say like the last thing I need in my life is another cal. So I'm calling it the Miffy non-cal art inspired <laughs> challenge. I know, I know you guys put up with me and all my crazy ideas. I love it. Thank you. I know a lot of you are going to jump on um, and join me in this. Now that I think of jumping on, you guys, I'm sorry, my brain is just all over the place. I'm actually going to add the second thing that I was thinking about earlier. A few of you, and this, sorry, this is jumping from being inspired by something to being inspired by something else. If, well, a lot of you have recently purchased my Sammy the Swimtime Bear pattern. Now, I've, I've only got three patterns on Etsy and Ravelry, um, but the most recent one has been Sammy the Swimtime Bee, and a lot of you have given a lot of love to Sammy the Swimtime Bee. Now what I wanted to share with you is just like a few photos that were sent to me recently or where I've been tagged in where you guys have adapted the Sammy the Swimtime Bee pattern into something else. So you used the base bee but you created, you added your own touch to it. And I actually made notes. This is why I was thinking about it. Because I wanted to mention it at some point. So I'm going to put some photos on here of the Sammy the Swim Time Bear pattern. And just tell you a little bit um, the backstory of this. So I wanted to share, you know, the things that give me joy. You guys, you support me with my patterns and my crazy ideas and my collabs, my challenges and my cows. Um, and in between all of that, you use my patterns, you know, you, you buy them and you change them and they give me so much joy to see it. And I wanted to share it on the channel as well. So any one of you who make any of my patterns, now obviously there's a lot more people who's used my patterns before. These are just some recent ones that I thought were so cute I had to share it with you all. The first one I'm going to pop up on the screen, I'm just going to move to the side a bit. Um, let me just shift my camera focus a bit all right the first one comes from Hillary now she made uh, Sammy the swim time bear for her great granddaughter they went to Paris during the Olympics and they were going to visit I think Disney World as well so she made this super cute Sammy the swim time bear but his swim ring she changed into a Mickey Mouse head to fit into the Disney theme because they had this planned trip to Disney World. So I thought that was fantastic. I love it when you guys adapt and change and use your own inspiration on any of my patterns. So this one, super cute. I had to share it. Next, and these three, actually a lot of you would have seen, they were part of Lee, over at Lee Max Om Olympics uh, series, but they were all made 
from the Sammy the Swim Time B pattern. And it was Bonnie uh, Tyler. She made this adorable Sammy the Swim Time bear holding the Olympic torch. I loved it. She also used the little vest pattern I had, adjusted it to be one of those tunics that the torch bearers wore during the Olympic ceremony. So that was brilliant. The next one is Mary Rose. Now Mary Rose does a lot. I think she participates in every single book club challenge collab that I put out there. She's part of it all. She's I think been with the channel from the very start which is now more than two years um, and she made this adorable swim inspired look for her little bear. She took it with you know the background being the swimming pool just I loved it and then Trudy also for the Army Olympics, she did a Tom Daly inspired Sammy the Swim Time Bear with his little knitting and all. I just, it was so lovely to see. Um, and I just loved how people can change a pattern and make it their own and, you know, use a theme and adapt a pattern to fit that theme. And this is always, as you guys know, this is what I preach on the channel, is that you have the skills to do whatever you want with a pattern. If you don't have a pattern, as we saw with the Mushroom Cat Challenge, you don't even need a pattern. You can still create something brilliant because you have the skills. Then the last one I wanted to share, and this is a, quite a few photos. This is from another lovely subscriber, uh, Deanna. I think, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. I think it's Deanna. She lives in Canada. Now she has sent me before photos um, that where she's taken her omigurumi in different locations because she travels a lot for work. So she wrote me an email and said, uh, would I be okay if she, you know, use my pattern, take it along with her to different locations as she travels around for work and sends me photos um, of my pattern in all of these different like locations and I love the idea I said absolutely I would love to see one of my patterns in all different spots so she's been sending me some wonderful photos I mean the quite a few of the photos that I'll, I'll pop on the screen is from tree carvings so there was some other competition that had Canadians that international carvers was given like a massive tree um, log and they had to carve something from it. So Sammy is standing with a few of these tree carvings and I absolutely loved it. So if any of you ever take photos of any of my patterns um, in some cute locations, please you're more than welcome to share it with me. I'm just going to adjust my screen to the center again. Please share it with me. I love seeing it. Um, and I think I'm going to create some sort of a journal also where I can pop these different variations of my patterns into because it honestly gives me so much joy. All right, you guys, that has now been a very, very long video. Um, I hope you've had a project that kept you busy throughout all of my talking. As always, I just love chatting to you all. Uh, it's like hanging out with like this fantastic crochet group that I look forward to every single week. All right, friends, that's it. I'm going to cut the video short. <laughs> no, I'm going to cut the video long. I don't even know what to call it. There's a lot of information that I threw your way. Let me know of any of you, a little side non-cal, if you want to send me something while we're waiting, you know, in between the Omigurumi World Tour, you know, sometimes we wait quite a bit of time in between the projects being chosen. Why not throw in a little cowl in the middle, non-cowl in the middle. All right. Um, I look forward to reading your emails, your comments, your Instagram posts. Tag me in whatever you feel like tagging me in. I love it. All right, friends. This is it for this week. I hope you've had a lovely weekend. I hope you're ready for the week ahead. And as always, until I see you in the next video, stay safe and stay crafty.